Battlefield 1, guys. This looks sick. Planes, tanks, horse cavalry, sabers, battleships, train. You know, everything we wanted, everything we could have hoped for. It's, it's awesome. Just sheer awesomeness. Great trailer. Oh, for fuck's sakes, Macintosh. So, just recently, the Battlefield 1 trailer has dropped. It is awesome. We are treated to it. It looks excellent. Awesome explosions. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. That's all I gotta say about that. And then we have John McIntosh. Oh my god, you fucking retard. Of course, hashtag Battlefield 1 is only the latest in a long line of video games that turn horrific human tragedy into fun digital experiences. What the fuck are you talking about? Mac Macintosh, Macintosh, you're a sad individual who looks down at his crotch and just is upset that he has a fucking wiener. We know you just want to get laid by Anita, but god damn it, fuck. Alright, where do we start? Horrific human tragedies and do fun digital experiences. There's a reason why we call certain events tragedies, and I think everyone can understand that. History is riddled with shitty events, and so naturally we don't want those shitty events to occur, or even worse, repeat. Now, one of the general consensus on how to achieve this is to educate individuals so that they can understand and recognize political disaster before it happens. And we have achieved this through various different ways, such as poems, heroic epics, stories, books, art, visual art, all different kinds of mediums. Starting in the 1900s, we started doing it through movies for about a century. Now we have moved on to the era of video games. Video games have historically been limited to their technology, and so therefore were very limited into what they can convey. In contrast, once the pen and paper existed, they could represent as much information as they wanted on them because all you had to do was simply add more sheets of paper. There was no technological discovery that was needed in order to add another sheet of paper. However, with video games, the Atari cartridge was limited to how much data could be put on an Atari cartridge. And because it was minimal, those games were really fucking simple. And even if, in theory, you could add enough cartridges to make the new Call of Duty game in respect to storage size, you would still need many cartridges in order to hold even one texture. And because game consoles are designed to only take one cartridge at one time, it's, it's bloody impossible. You'd have to have a game system that would be able to take a million cartridges all at once and then be able to do something with all those million cartridges. It'd just be an engineering nightmare. You would need a thousand processors from 1980. Like, your thing would be the size of your bloody room. It would be ridiculous. I'm, I'm just telling you this from an engineering st standpoint. And if you didn't do that system, you'd essentially have a stupid ass peep show of merely parts of textures and then a whole bunch of other cartridges of just useless game code because it needs to reference the art assets and it can't because you have to have them running at the same time and so therefore it's impossible for it to even be a video game. It would just be pictures and that's not even taking into the fact that an Atari can't even render 3D graphics and shit like that and you know just all these other retardedly advanced graphical methods that would just be impossible like and and then there, there's the heat issue it, the cocksucker would melt because you have so much goddamn inefficient uh processors and memory chips and switches and oh my god it's a fucking electrical nightmare so even in theory having a modern video game in the 80s is technologically impossible and so the reason why i mention all that is because video games have historically not portrayed art. They have not been art because they had to be fun video games. You had to sell them, and therefore, because you can only represent, you know, 8-bit characters and shit like that, there was physically not enough technological capability to describe and portray very vague and conceptual artistic ideas and thoughts. You just, it was impossible to do that in the 80s. And we are just realizing it now in the last four or five years that it is even really possible to invoke things like really deep emotional connections and stuff like that. But even then, there is also development curve towards these games. The, not every game that comes out in 2016 is now suddenly a piece of art. You know, some of these games aren't even good games. They're just, they're just shit. They're just shit. Just like some movies that come out today are, are shit. And a lot of this has to do with 
innovation with the big titans. The big game companies are well established for 20, 30 years. And when big companies are big, they take lots of risks to get big. And then once they are big, they don't take as many risks. So they are going to fall back on the old ways more often than the new guys coming up, such as the indie devs or the new game companies that are coming up in the industry. And because video gaming has historically been about making fun games, that's their primary focus. They stick to that formula. Like Even within the franchises they own, they are so repetitive that people are getting so sick of this shit that we have like a million dislikes on the new Call of Duty because it's the same future shit that we've seen for five fucking years, right? And so if that's a bloody obstacle, how quickly do you think Activision and EA are going to get to making games that are works of art, really? I mean, if you want artistic video games, the best place to look is the Japanese Titans. That's the best works of art in terms of AAA video games. To, in my opinion, right, and, and generally speaking. I mean, EA's uh, slogan back in the 80s used to be when they were a small dev company. I think they were a dev company. I don't think they were ever a uh, started out as a publisher. That's usually not the case. But their slogan was, can a video game make you cry? And their slogan now, while they're a publisher, is, it's in the game. So that tells you how disconnected they are from the actual name of the company, Electronic Arts. And so, well, okay, we have all these other artistic mediums. Why is it important that video games become art? Why, why is that important? Why is that an important factor in the story of remembering tragedies? Well, the reason being is because young kids don't really read books. They don't write poems. They don't really care about heroic epics. Nobody has cared about heroic epics for a thousand years. And they are actually watching less and less TV as well. They are more concerned with YouTube videos, social media, and video games. That's how young people are working. And so if you want tragedies to be remembered and historic events to be remembered in the future, you have to put them in video games. You have to put them in the medium that young people are consuming because they are the future. And even if they aren't artistic per se or have few artistic themes, you can still have games in a historical context that are fun and popular and very positive as well. I mean, a quick glance at World War II shooters, the genre Call of Duty popularized. This does have a positive effect for raising people's education levels. I mean, go out and ask a gamer a World War II question, and I'm guaranteed they'll probably have some general understanding, whereas the mass majority of non-gamers... I mean, some common knowledge questions for gamers would be, who has the best tanks in the war? Who had the best tanks in the war? Who were the sides involved? How many fronts there were in the European theater? What type of weaponry did infantry typically have. They should be able to name one of the islands that was fought on in the Pacific Theater. Some knowledge about battles like Stalingrad. They'll have some knowledge about things like Is uh, Sicily and Italy and the North African Theater. I mean, these are not advanced level questions for gamers. Whereas, in contrast, non-gamers would just be completely lost. You know, these are advanced historian level questions. For example, some general knowledge for non-gamers would be things like Japan was involved and they got a bomb dropped on them and they bombed Pearl Harbor and Americans were involved and they fought Japan. There was Germany and the Nazis and Hitler and the Holocaust and they were all against Europe and America joined in as well and you had the Normandy invasions and after that I'm pretty sure that's where everybody's knowledge stops. I don't even think they know the American president at the time. And even that might be generous, judging by this anecdotal evidence here. World War II. Ever hear of it? No. No? You've never heard of World War II? No. Who were the two teams in World War II? George Bush versus Saddam, whatever his name is. I don't know. How many world wars have there been? Three. Oh, these, these idiot compilations get me every time. Uh, that was Paul Joseph Watkins' video. It, I'll link it down below. It's actually about how uh, people have become stupider in America. So, good video. Watch it up. It's like eight minutes long or something like that. But anyways, uh, that's my point, though. Is that gamers understand World War II much better because that genre has been popularized. There's so many video games on it. Everything from Call of Duty to strategy games. And so, therefore, it has raised the education levels of gamers. And to be fair... This is a very popular war. There's a lot of documentaries, there's a lot of movies, there's a lot of 
writing and poems, you can go to grandpa and talk to him about his experiences in the war, if you have that grandpa, right? Yes, there is a lot of knowledge out there in other mediums as well, but, and I cannot stress this enough, from my perspective, it does appear to be that gamers have more knowledge on World War II than the general population. Yes, I know that's just an assertion and I don't have stats or data to back that up, and I I don't even know where to find that stats or data, even if they do exist somewhere. So just to be clear, I'm not trying to push a narrative or anything like that. I'm just raising my opinion and my perspective on the matter and stressing that it's not an empirically proven fact. Okay, so what if just gamers are more interested in World War II documentaries? What if, what if that's the case? What if that's the case? Well, what about Assassin's Creed players being more knowledgeable about 17th century Europe and 15th century Rome and all that other shit and 18th century London and whatever the hell other eras that Assassin's Creed has covered. I, I'm not a huge fan of the series. I don't remember. I can't list them off name by name, but I'm pretty sure it's like 17th century America and independence shit and like that, right? But I bet you Assassin's Creed players know more general knowledge about these eras and their specific times than the general population. I, I just... I cannot see that statement being untrue. It, it doesn't make any fucking sense if it were, you know. N this is what I'm trying to get at, is historical context video games, even if they aren't particularly excellent forms of art, are still wonderful in terms of educating people so that they are aware of how uh, wars work, even if they just know specific dates and, and just dumb things like that. They don't necessarily have to be a bloody historian master. They're just a general person. And the fact that we can incorporate this into a fun medium is amazing. It's excellent. It's educating young people. I believe this is educating young people to be smarter than their fucking parents. Yes, people play video games for, because they're fun, but they don't play campaigns in historical contexts and think, wow, I totally want that World War II to happen again. Like, no, nobody thinks that. Nobody fucking thinks that. Nobody glorifies that or fantasizes that. Maybe they say, like, you know what, I want to fight for my country, but they don't They don't go out and say, oh, I want Hitler to rise again and, and us kill the Neo Hitler or something like that and rage a six-year war and 60 million casualty war. Like, fuck, nobody says that. Nobody says they want World War III to happen. They're always fearful of it happening. And so, Macintosh, you giant fuckwad, when you say you're turning tragedies into fun digital experience, of, cor of course you're making a fun game based in a historical context, but when you're playing like things like campaigns and stuff like that, nobody's thinking, wow, what a fun human tragedy we're playing. Like, nobody's fucking thinking that. Nobody's even remotely close to that. Nobody's thinking, since we played this in a video game, we want this to happen in real life. No, no, they aren't fucking doing that. Oh my god. You seem to have this dumbass idea that gamers just cannot con disconnect from a video game. Like, they can't understand what's real life and what's a fucking video game. Like, do you think we're stupid? Do you think we're stupid? Because I think you're stupid for posting all these other dumbass tweets. And your entire narrative and being critical of video games and saying that they- asserting that they have real-world consequences and shit like that, when- the empirical data proves you wrong. They, they, it literally says that violent crime goes down when video games exploded. So, I, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and, and then there's no fucking link between violent video games and violent crime and, and all this other shit, and same with sexism as well. It's just, there's nothing. There's nothing. It's a disconnected link, because guess what? Gamers, believe it or not, are smart enough to disconnect reality with a video game. They are smart enough to separate the two. So, let's go through your other dumbass tweets. Everything about World War I was horrific, brutal, and tragic. The video game industry sees that and thinks perfect for a fun digital playground. Alright, first of all, it's EA, not the video game industry. The video game industry has not done World War I. They, they have completely ignored it. It has been ignored because video game companies have decided, you know what, we can't do World War One. There's not enough going on there. They, they decided not to take the risk. EA has taken the risk to do World War One, and I think they've done it relatively well in, in terms of its historical context. I mean, obviously, shit's blown out of proportion because it's a video game, and, you know, everything, explosions and blow-ups and, you know, all that shit is exaggerated. 
And the only thing I could see that was maybe taken out of context was fucking Iron Man right here. Yeah, that, that's what I feel like calling him. But I don't remember this ever being a thing in World War One. I. I do know that World War One, they tried a lot of weird and wacky shit because warfare was really evolving at that time. But I'm not sure about uh, full metal jacket suits. I think that the last the last example I'm aware of that is like conquistadors and shit because they wore like really heavy metal plates, and then eventually they s decided to abandon that because it just got too heavy to put all knights in super heavy armor that could block musket rounds, and then. And guns just got even more powerful from there on out. So I, I doubt that this is a real thing, but maybe it was. And maybe it was not as effective as they're portraying it in the game. But I really just don't know. But uh, regardless, you, you just seem to have this ass backwards, John McIntosh. Like, god damn, dude. You seem to think that this is just purely offensive, right? Well, guess what? Everybody who's fought in World War One is now dead. If there was somebody to offend, they would be it, and they're no longer with us, unfortunately. So so I'm guessing the people you're trying to protect from being offended are the descendants of people who participate in this war. Well, guess what? You're speaking to one right now. And no, I'm not fucking offended by Battlefield's World War One shooter. Like, goddamn, it's a goddamn video game, for Christ's sake. Oh, so you're the descendants of war heroes? No, I'm not the descendants of war heroes. What the fuck makes you think that? Well, you claim to be the descendant of a person who participated in this war. Those are not the same things, dumbass. Okay, let, let's pop up Great Granddad's World War One draft form for the government of Canada. Alright, so if we notice here, I, I blurred out all the names in here, because I'm not a fucking idiot. I don't want to get doxxed. Oh, well then that means that this could be fake. Yeah, you're damn right. Look, anything can be fake. I could fake this whole goddamn document if I really was good at Photoshop, but I'm not, and I'm just not going to. Either way, I'm just telling you this is a legit document. I don't know how else to put it. And proving it would have to reveal my identity and all that other shit, and I, I just, I would rather not get doxxed, and you guys just believe me on this. Like, listen and believe, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. It always works. Come on. Anyways, the date that he was drafted was 1917. Hmm, that's interesting. That's a year before the war ended, huh? And what battalion was he assigned to? Well, he was assigned to 12th Battalion. And when I looked that up in Wikipedia, it was a reserve battalion for the Canadian Corps at that time. So, conclusion, he didn't fight in any fucking battles as far as I can tell. He Obviously, living in a fucking trench is terrible, but he probably only lived in a trench for like maybe six months or something like that. So, in all honesty, this isn't that big of a deal. And I mean, I never met this guy. He died well before I was born. Honestly, I heard that he was a bit of an asshole, but I really don't care. I mean, take it what you will from this example. But when we're talking about other people in my direct line, there was actually nobody else that was eligible. They either weren't in the goddamn country at the time of World War One, or they just weren't even, uh, for example, they would have been like 60, and then their children would have been like 7 or 12. So that's pretty self-explanatory. But uh, what is interesting is where the family came from. Well, they came from Belgium. And at that time, Belgium was part of the German Empire. It was also located on the border of France and the German Empire. So, pretty interesting, and that's particularly where they fought all the trench warfare. I know the majority of it was fought in France, but towards the end of the war, uh, the, the Allies started pushing more in towards Germany, so therefore the war front would be closer to West Germany and hence Belgium. So, I'm not really saying that they necessarily got their barn blown up by shells and had to be political refugees, but at the same time, they would have definitely felt the economic repercussions of this war, so I don't know, just another example. So I guess that's two out of four if you're counting for, the, you know, the Prussian Olympics, if that's what you want to call it. So is my argument valid now? Can I, can I be heard? Am I allowed to speak? I mean, everyone knows this is how these SJW work, so I'm just trying to make the relevant argument here, I guess, because... Facts aren't good enough, feelings are. Well, uh, that was a long-ass explanation, so let's get back to, uh, the, the Macintosh-ing. It is absolutely unconsciously that EA and EA Dice are marketing mustard gas as a fun future weapon in Battlefront w Battlefield 1, sorry. Mustard gas, or chlorine gas, is actually not as bad as it's made out to be. Whoa, 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 okay, calm down, calm down, let me explain. 
Now, okay, we all know mustard gas is not that nice. It, it fucking blinds people. It's not the greatest thing for you, and you can obviously die from it. But at the same time, the whole point of mustard gas and warfare was actually not to kill. It was to flush out the enemy and, you know, have them retreat. And if you stayed, then I guess you were too stupid and just died, unfortunately. Like, it's war. They don't really give a shit. They're trying to kill you. So, yes, the whole point of chlorine gas was to get you to retreat because, oh, shit, look, orange gas. Oh, crap, I can't breathe it. Okay, let's get out of here. You know, I'm not, fuck this. I'm not fighting this. Instead of, you know, kill a whole bunch of people and then them get scared shitless and then retreat. You know, that was the whole point of chlorine gas as a tactical weapon on the battlefield. And if you died, got injured, they killed you, well, I'm sorry, but war is nasty. That's all I can say. Now, fortunately for everyone, mustard gas proved to be an ineffective weapon. Oh, wait, what the hell? You just said it was that used for that. No, no, that's how it was in theory supposed to be used. Now, the first chlorine attack ever in the history of the world was used by the Germans in the Battle of Yipes in World War I. And I totally butchered that name because I'm not French and I have no idea how to fucking pronounce it. But anyways, so they used it on the French and British positions and they fled. They fled like... Pussies, I guess, if you want to call it that. I mean, I'm not the one getting chlorine gas thrown at me, so yeah, it's totally acceptable for me to, you know, say that about uh, dead people. But you know who didn't flee? The Canadians. The 1st Canadian Division held the line that the British and the French were supposed to hold for 48 hours of battle, so... Suck it, Britain, I guess. Okay, you just said gas attacks are, are lethal and dangerous. How is this even possible? Okay, so this is possible because reportedly... They picked up uh, fabrics of cloth that they had on them. They, they dumped it in the dirty-ass, muddy water, which was full of piss and shit from, like, rats and humans. And they wrapped it around their faces and protected their mouths so they could actually fucking breathe. I don't know about you, but that seems pretty manly. Soaking a rag in piss water and wrapping it around your face to protect your life while you shoot Germans. I, I think that's pretty manly in my opinion. I don't know what trumps that, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so the point being is that as soon as the first gas attack happened, the defense for gas attacks was already made. And yeah, I know gas masks are a lot better, but let's face it, they already, they already had a suitable defense to gas attacks, and this example is proof of it. I mean, they held the line. They were successful at repelling the Germans. And then you had the pain in the ass when uh, the wind would change direction, and then you would just gas your own troops. Like, this is why people, right after it was used, they, they started to realize, okay, gas is a worthless weapon, and they stopped using it. I mean, the Americans got their hands in, they tried to use it, and didn't fucking work as well. So after the war, everyone just agreed, you know what, let's just make chemical weapons legal, because all it does is it blinds people, it, it fucking fucks up their health, and it just gives us no military advantage, so what's the point, right? And so that's why uh, gas and chemical weapons were kind of overrated in terms of how lethal they actually were in World War One and since then. And that's not to d downplay the fact that uh, people lost their sight from this shit, but... Honestly, there was a lot more people that blew up from artillery in World War One. There was a lot more people that got mowed down by fucking machine guns in World War One. That was much more lethal than fucking mustard gas. And the fact that you single it out as, you know, mustard gas. Oh, you guys are terrible for making mustard gas a fun future weapon. Well, they made planes a fun future weapon. They made battleships. They made fucking uh, riding on horses and sabers and Iron Man. <laughs> as fun future weapons as well, so the fact that you're singling out mustard gas like it's even worse than the other weapons is kind of dumb because I just proved that they're more lethal. So it really just proves that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Macintosh. You don't even know the history of World War One. Just, just shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. It's also unconscionable, whatever the fuck, that I have not seen any gaming sites call out EA's apparent inclusion of chemical weapons in Battlefield 1. Wow, because the one time the gaming press isn't even on your side, I bet that's bullshit. I bet that's fucking bullshit. Well then, um... Yeah, let's go through the rest of these tweets. Uh, speed round. Your character is constricted into the military. You find yourself in the trenches. You have to survive the war without firing your gun. No, that that's a terrible shooter. That's a terrible shooter, sorry. You cannot have a shooter where you do not fire your gun. Remember how huge numbers of soldiers refused to fire their weapon in World War II? I, I don't remember that being a thing, but, uh, sure. 
How about making a dramatic game out of that experience? No, because it's not a drama, it's a shooter. See, you've got this ass backwards. It's not a drama, it's a shooter. Even if a thousand troops actually did refuse to fire, they that's like a thousand out of forty million troops that were fielded. Like, come on. Just just think for a second, Macintosh. It's not a sp large number of troops that refuse to fire their weapon. They might have had uh, complications with it, but god. When the military uses FPS game experiences to train actual soldiers for killing, that should be a clue we need to rethink the genre. No, no, they don't they don't do that. That's stupid. That's really stupid. You know how they train real soldiers? They give them real soldier training. They give them, you know, obstacle courses, ranger school, shit like that. They don't they don't Here, here's a video game. All right, now that you've completed Call of Duty, you're ready to fight for the real world. No, that that's that's stupid. Nobody does that. Oh my god. The psychological impact of turning the digital act of killing into fun rush is part of the modern military strategy. No! No! I don't even have to finish that one. No, that's that's 100% inaccurate. All right, more tweets. Well, fanboys tend to get hostile when you parade your righteous indignation in their faces. This is the response to Macintosh, and Macintosh responds by, and by that I assume you mean fanboys tend to get hostile when you state your own opinion on your own Twitter feed. No, 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 because you hashtag all this crap with Battlefield 1 if you don't remember, so they do see it in their feed. Ding dong. The whole point to Twitter is to spread your opinion far and wide across the internet to many other people's feeds. That's the whole point of Twitter. You're, this is a public forum for you to be openly criticized on when you post stupid shit on it, okay? That's that's what the whole point of Twitter is. And the guy with the smartest opinions, I guess, gets the most follows or some shit. I, I don't know. It's like some sort of fucking contest, I guess. But remember when you called us dead? Y yeah, you got the gaming press to call us all dead because we're all stupid we're all losers. We all need to shut up and become a bunch of sissy babies and get rid of Call of Duty. Get rid of all those sh nasty, evil, vile, toxic masculinity shooters. Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely uh, just sticking to your own little circle there, Macintosh. Welp, I should now probably log off for a few days and wait for the inevitable asshole gamer to storm to pass through my mentions. Oh my... The critic can't be criticized. Wow, what a double standard. People know you're talking out of your ass, and so that's why they get pissed off at you. You, you poke the bear, you're going to get fucking ripped to shreds. Just don't fuck around. But who am I kidding? You're, you're just trying to make a victim of yourself. You're, you know, this is this is totally valid act, act, is activism. Jeez, easy for me to say. Video games have potential to give us experiences that increase our empathy for one another. Battlefield and Call of Duty do the opposite. Do you have any proof to back that up? Nope, just assertions. That's interesting, yeah. Ooh, Macintosh, no proof. Oh, what an assertion. Oh, no proof. Wow, that's great. I, I know it's Twitter, but you've never posted any proof in your fucking life. I've never seen a goddamn video where you posted any fucking proof. You just asserted this because Bell Hooks said it. God damn. Bell Hooks is a fucking idiot. Like, I, I love how you just assert that the gamer just... As soon as I'm done playing Call of Duty, you know, the, the first thing I think about is fucking killing people out on the street as soon as possible. It's like, I did that in a video game once. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that in real life. Because, you know, a video game is the only reason why I did it, even though I've seen these things in movies and books and TV and shit like that. But, you know, you know no, it's, it's definitely video games that triggered me. Mm-hmm. You see, you see the logic here? You see the logic here? Yeah. It's not working. And this has got to be the dumbest fucking tweet of them all. A video game where you play as a medic, the, the function of the medic is to be a gameplay mechanic, ding dong, in World War One, trying to save lives on both sides. No, you don't save lives on both sides. You save lives on your own fucking side. You don't revive the enemy teammates, you ding dong. As shells fall and gas fills the trenches around... And, uh, yeah, um... It's a war game. That's all I gotta say there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this has run really long, but thank you and have a good day. And on a side note, I'm trying to, you know, do this YouTube thing, grow my channel, have some fun. But at the same time, I have no idea what the hell you guys want. And 
likes and subscribes are all great and dandy, but honestly, I cannot get enough feedback. I cannot get enough comments. So if you like the video or if you drop a like, please leave a comment, just a short one on, you know, what you liked about it, whether you liked the sound, the, the audio or whatever, the content, the, ve the graphics, I don't care what the hell it is, you know, just the biggest thing that you liked. Or if you really hated the video, please add, uh, you know, oh, your voice sounds like a faggot or, you know, whatever the hell it may be that you absolutely hate. Uh, if it's something like that, I probably can't change it. But if it's something more like, uh, oh, you edited this wrong, I don't like it, I put a, this, uh, a down thumbs down. Okay, then I can focus on that and I can actually change that. I just want to improve rather than be told you hate it. And don't hate it. And then I have to play this weird-ass game of Mastermind and try whatever works and see what happens. Like, no. I, I, I would rather just be told I can't get enough feedback. It's one of my uh, default uh, down shortfalls of being such a small channel and just starting out. So, anyways, I hope you uh, participate and uh, thank you very much and have a good day.